Good morning and uh, welcome to this uh, ministerial meeting uh, in uh, NATO. Um, it is now three months uh, since our uh, Wales uh, summit and uh, since then we have been uh, turning uh, decisions into action. And today we will uh, review our progress and we will uh, drive our alliance forward by making uh, new decisions. In a changing world, we need to keep uh, NATO strong. Strong today and strong tomorrow. To deal with any challenges from the east or from the south. In Wales, we agreed on the readiness action plan. We are starting to deliver on that plan now. We have already boosted our forces in the east and part of the alliance on land, at sea, and in the air. And all allies, allies are committed to doing their part next year to keep us safe. We are also developing a spearhead force able to react to any threat within days. This new force should be ready in 2016. In the meantime, I expect allies to make available an interim force early next year to, to provide the capabilities we need. We will also, at the meeting, discuss the priorities of the new Ukrainian government and show our firm and strong support for Ukraine at this difficult time, including through several trust funds, and we will also hold the first meeting of NATO ministers with our partners in the Resolute Support mission. This mission will uh, train, advise and assist Afghan security forces from the 1st of January after the end of our combat mission. And I had excellent talks both with the President Ghani and with um, Chief Executive uh, Dr. Abdullah uh, yesterday, and they will uh, join us at the meeting uh, today. And their presence at the uh, NATO Foreign Minister's meeting is a strong sign of the importance of uh, the strong mutual commitment between NATO and uh, Afghanistan, and uh, that we are still committed to work uh, together also into the future. So to sum up, I expect uh, four concrete outcomes from this ministerial meeting today. First, an agreement on a continuous NATO presence in the eastern part of our alliance. Second, the announcement of an interim spearhead force to enhance our readiness. And third, strong political and practical support for, for Ukraine. And fourth, the launch of the new resolute support mission in Afghanistan from the 1st of January next year. And with that, I'm ready to take some questions. We'll start with Ukrainian media. Good morning, uh, News Agency Union Ukrainian, Irina Sommer. Uh, Secretary General, we all know what NATO what expect from NATO towards Ukraine and Russia. And we also know what NATO expect from Russia. But what NATO expect from Ukraine? Thank you. First, I will underline that just to have the meeting today in the NATO-Ukraine uh, Commission is important. And Foreign Minister Klimkin, he will join us by video conference because he has to be in the parliament, in the Rada, because actually today, actually now, uh, the vote is taking place uh, on the new uh, government. Uh, what we expect from Ukraine is uh, that uh, Ukraine is uh, uh, continuing on a path of reform and uh, that they are uh, doing what they can to uh, implement and to follow up uh, the Minsk uh, agreements. And we have seen that the government of Ukraine are doing what they can to implement the Minsk uh, agreements. The challenge has, of course, been that uh, the separatists and Russia is not respecting uh, the Minsk agreements and is violating the ceasefire and uh, not respecting the sovereignty and the 
territorial integrity of Ukraine. But I expect that we can uh, uh, discuss with the uh, Foreign Minister, uh, Klimkin, today uh, the priorities uh, uh, of the new government in Ukraine, and that is important because Ukraine is a, uh, uh, an important partner of NATO, and we look forward to continue to work together with Ukraine. Okay, I think we have another Ukrainian question. Radio Vesti, Bogdan Amosov. Uh, Mr. General Secretary, what should uh, Ukraine do if uh, separatists and Russian army will attack uh, to the other territories of Ukraine? NATO fully support the independence, uh, the sovereignty and the territorial integrity of uh, Ukraine. And uh, uh, any violation of the international recognized borders of Ukraine is something we uh, strongly condemn. And we support Ukraine in uh, defending itself. Uh, NATO is uh, supporting Ukraine both politically but also through practical uh, support uh, uh, by putting up the trust funds. And we are announcing the trust funds today. They are becoming operational today. Uh, and also, in addition uh, to the aid uh, and the support which uh, NATO provides uh, as an alliance, uh, many allies are also providing bilateral uh, support for, uh, for Ukraine. And we have also, uh, uh, all, the, all the allies have also implemented uh, strong economic sanctions against uh, Russia. So, since Ukraine is an independent country, I respect the decisions. Uh, which Ukraine uh, is uh, taking, but we are strongly supporting the independence of Ukraine, and of course we are condemning all violations of the borders and the territorial integrity of Ukraine. What is your assessment of the situation on the ground in Ukraine? Do you believe the Minsk ceasefire agreement is holding? Uh, is Russia upholding its side of the bargain? We have to support all efforts to implement and to respect the Minsk agreements and the ceasefire. And the government in Ukraine has really made strong efforts to implement the different uh, provisions uh, within the Minsk uh, agreements. The problem has been that uh, the separatists and Russia is not uh, respecting the uh, Minsk agreements. Uh, the, uh, the, the ceasefire is uh, violated. And, for instance, uh, uh, the uh, Minsk agreements, which, uh, which states that we should uh, have a monitoring of the international recognized borders of Ukraine, uh, has not been possible to implement because the work of those who are responsible for monitoring the borders have been uh, severely undermined. So to respect the international borders, uh, to make it possible to have uh, independent international monitoring of the border, uh, to stop uh, the provision of uh, military equipment, of, uh, of, uh, of uh, uh, tanks, of, uh, of forces uh, to uh, the separatists uh, in Ukraine is uh, something which is very important and we call on Russia to do exactly that, to implement and to respect the ceasefire and to uh, withdraw its forces from Ukraine and to stop uh, supporting the separatists uh, in Ukraine. Okay, we have time for one last question, if there is any. If not, thank you very much. <laughs>